so a cup abduction angle of 45 degree or less is recommended to avoid excessive wear we need to reduce it to less than 45 degrees so that this contact patch area gets covered somewhere here so this should not be done this should be done and the inclination and anti-version can influence the wear rate i've already told so if the inclination is high the contact patch area is going to lie outside the SWR rim that will result in high wear rate and as far as version is concerned we have already discussed now it has also been seen that the smaller female heads they are going to have smaller contact patch area because of their size so therefore the volume of wear is high while the larger cups have lower wear volume because of the larger surface patch area but studies have shown that there is no significant difference between the 22 28 and 32 millimeter heads so they all can be used without much affecting the wear rates and Coming to the variations in the anatomy of the pelvis as far as THR is concerned, the fe females have higher antiversion compared to males, they, their acetabulum is deeper and the female horizontal as well as vertical offset is less in females. The female head diameter is around 48 mm on average in females while it is higher that is 55 mm in males and the volume and the bone density is, low, is lower in females. And multiple factors can influence the pelvic shape like the environment lifestyle nutrition etc which are likely to be equally responsible as the ethnic or geographical factors like population based variations etc so as far as estabular version is concerned six percent of healthy population can have the estabular version therefore there comes the concept of the combined antiversion so any if any reconstructive procedure is going to be done and we have to restore the estabular version to the retro version that is anatomical for that patient then we need to ensure that the anti version of the femoral head is increased accordingly because the sum of those sum of the negative anti version of estabulum because of the retro version because of the retro version and the anti version of the femoral proximal femur should be around 45 degree as we have already discussed and some patients can have coxa profunda also the acetabular is very deep and the articular extent of the acetabulum is just matching the ilio ischial line or you can say colas line asymptomatic dynamic dysplasia of hip has a prevalence of 3.6 to 4.3 percent in healthy population which may even go undiagnosed during their life cycle so these are the values i have already told you the offset in females is smaller compared to the males head size is smaller the neck shaft angle is also smaller because the females have slightly various femoral neck now as far as variations in anatomy are concerned the femoral neck shaft angle varies from 98 degree to 160 degree that means from varus to valgus similarly femoral torsion that is version can can also vary and it can vary resulting in anti version or retro version of more than 40 degree that means many normal patients can have female head retro version also again the concept of combined anti version need to be restored in those patients whenever operating for orthoplasty and variations in femoral canal morphology must be considered which can be constitutional or pathological two important parameters need to be understood for understanding the volume of the canal the cortical thickness index that means the difference of the outer diameter and the inner diameter divided by the outer diameter and canal flare index that means the ratio of canal width proximally to the intracortical width of the canal isthmus that means the narrowest part of the femoral canal femurs with ratios of less than three are categorized as stovepipe that means they are they have they are wildly spacious and those with ratio of 3 to 4.7 are categorized as normal while those with ratios of very high 4.7 to 6.5 here are labeled as champagne fluted that means they are very narrow so the ratio is going to be higher whenever this part is very high compared to this part so the canal flare index whenever high has importance as far as the orthoplasty components of the femur are concerned so the non cemented components are used in case of normal or champagne fluted canal flare index while in case of stove pipe kind of canal flare index the cemented components are more useful the same is for cortical thickness index also the inner diameter is usually 50 percent of the outer diameter if it is less than half of the outer diameter that means it is very narrow while if it is more than 50 percent it is progressing towards the type c that means kind of stove pipe of canal in which the cemented components are preferred and now coming to the component positioning so as as we have already discussed 
if we increase the lever arm on the outer side that will be beneficial because then the abductor pull has to be smaller compared to the abductor pull which is there for a smaller lever arm increasing the lever arm will, will reduce the requirement of the abductor pull as we have seen in the previous figures so therefore the medialization of the acetabulum is helpful but you need to be cautious not to breach the medial side bone that will result in early failure or loosening of the component and also if you are medializing too much that can result in migration of whole of the femur more medially that can result in laxity of the abductors you see the abductor muscles are directed in this direction but if you are medializing the acetabular component the femoral component will automatically will go more medial and this orientation will of abductor muscles will now come at somewhere here so they will become lax so therefore you should aim for the global restoration of the offset that means you have to increase femoral offset also whenever you are medializing the acetabular component that means you have to increase length of the lever arm also whenever you are medializing the cup that will restore the abductor pull in this particular direction the recommended medialization of the acetabular component is 5 mm and also you have to increase the offset by horizontal offset by 5 mm to improve the abductor function and if you are performing the medialization of the cup but not increasing the femoral offset more than 5 mm that can result in laxity of the abductors and automatically the efficiency of the abductor pull will get reduced and if you are increasing the femoral offset more than 5 mm that can actually bring the abductors to positions home way here and this will result in excessively taut abductors which can result in excessive pain tension in the abductors and also due to asymmetric force distribution can result in implant loosening and periprostatic fractures also i had already discussed this part that the contact patch should be covered by the articular rim otherwise there will be chance of edge loading so this is correct inclination of around 45 degree while this is not because of the 60 degree inclination and the contact patch area is actually lying at the rim of the acetabular component so there is risk of edge loading also and another point whenever the contact patch area is distributed near the rim it automatically blocks any fluid migration inside the joint this results in less amount of lubrication in this area and whenever the lubrication is less that means the synovial fluid lining is not there that is going to increase the friction and also the wear between the surfaces synovial fluid lining helps in smooth motion between the articular components if it's not there that will result in extra wear so therefore there is need of a fluid film between the articular surface by now we should be aware that the acetabular cup version should be around 15 to 15 plus minus 10 degree of anti version that is normal and there should be inclination of the 40 plus minus 10 degree in medial lateral direction with the understanding of the spino pelvic biomechanics we need to restore the functional orientation of the acetabulum not the anatomical orientation suppose the patient is having a deformity of spine deformity of spine and there is minimal motion of the pelvis then we have to see pelvis during the patient's normal sitting and walking in normal sitting the pelvis is retroverted that means it is rotated behind in case of lying supine it is actually slightly antiverted that means rotated anteriorly while it is somewhere in between when during the standing so we need to see the position of the patient pelvis during these postures to understand what kind of cup orientation we want so suppose the patient is having deformity of the spine and the, there's minimal motion of the pelvis now if the patient sit and the pelvis remains in this position only then automatically the posterior coverage is going to be reduced compared to a normal sitting posture so if you see in normal sitting posture if the femur is in, the, in this direction then now actually the femoral head is completely covered by the acetabulum this part is actually now covering the femoral head perfectly and when we are standing again then also the and when we are standing the acetabulum actually at the words that means it rotates in this direction therefore again the coverage of the proximal part of femur is again good if the pelvis is fixed in this particular position then even during the sitting part then we have to ensure that there is extra coverage in this part special liners are available that provides extra coverage in this zone so we have to ensure that the functional orientation of the acetabulum 
in relation to the spine and pelvic orientation is restored it means if the patient is going from standing to sitting position or lying position there should not be any inadequate coverage of the femoral head during all these postures so it should remain optimal in in all these positions for that we need to ensure that in any patients who have problem in their spine or pelvis additional lateral views in sitting standing and lying positions are ordered to understand the orientation of the pelvis and the acetabulum so therefore in those patients the functional restoration of acetabular orientation is important i'll be coming to all these things in coming slides so therefore the version is critical in standing and sitting position as far as the femoral femoral component positioning is concerned either varus or valgus is not while the varus is going to increase the femoral offset it is going to put strain on the terminal part of the stem that can result in early failure while in case of valgus we are actually reducing the offset that will result in laxity of the abductors and their function is going to decrease so therefore it is so the best thing is to keep the femoral stem in an optimum position that is in central position not too varus not too valgus so this was the orientation i was talking about normally in standing position pelvis orientation is perfectly vertical while in case of sitting it retrovers slightly and in case of sitting with forward bending it retrovers further posteriorly and if the patient is having normal acetabular motion then the anatomical parameters can be trusted for cup orientation while in case of spine deformity when the pelvic motion is restricted or limited or pathological we need to consider the orientation of acetabulum in accordance with the pelvic motion during all these postures and as far as the version of the stem is concerned it is very important to restore the correct version because then only the effective abductor lever arm will be restored suppose if you have retroverted the femoral head then also you are actually reducing the abductor lever arm length because the abductor lever arm length was in this direction by rotating it you have actually changed the orientation of the abductor lever arm the abductor lever arm will best function when the correct version is restored but if you change the version the abductor lever arm will not function properly why because direction of pull will be in this direction but you have restored the version in this direction so the pull is definitely going to be deficient because now you have changed the version of into retro version then this part the anterior bone is going to hit the acetabular rim when doing internotation while when it was normal there was good scope of internotation here similarly if you are increasing the anterior version then you are actually reducing the extent of the externotation part of the stem is going to hit the posterior part of the acetabular rim quite early this is going to reduce the extrusion and will result in impingement during the extrusion it is also important to restore the neutral tilt of the stem if the stem is tilted posteriorly you are actually bringing the femoral head more anteriorly while if you are tilting the stem anteriorly you are actually bringing the femoral head posteriorly again you are changing the orientation of the force of the abductor muscles and also adding impingement now what will happen suppose you have tilted the stem posteriorly and this is the axis of the proximal femur then you you have actually reduced the amount of extension of the hip joint the stem is actually extended while the femur is not in extended position so automatically the femur is not going to extend further and if it is going then it is going to get impinged posteriorly this bone is going to hit on the posterior part of the acetabular rim and here you see the axis of the stem is actually matching the axis of the proximal femur that means if the stem is in extension then the proximal femur is also in extension but in this case you see the stem is actually in flexion while the stem by the proximal femur is actually in extension then also it is going to impinge to avoid any these issues you have to template the stem femoral head and the acetabular components so therefore the pre op planning is important so if the canal is actually thick and teerly and thin posteriorly then automatically your stem is going to tilt posteriorly then you have to search for that kind of stem which is actually fitting only in this part a short stem would be a good one or you can go for customized process also if there is a significant amount of deformation of the proximal femur now coming to individual component parameters so larger component head is actually preferred the first because it is having larger contact patch area that means the distribution of force is actually at a larger area that means it results in less wear it has better stability compared to smaller component you see there is something called jump distance suppose if this part is 20 mm this part will be around 30 mm now for getting dislocated this femoral head component has to travel this distance to come completely out of this area that is around 30 mm while for this femoral head it is going to be around 20 mm only so it has a very small jump distance that is it is unstable it is relatively unstable compared to a larger femoral head 
so the jump distance is the distance required by the femoral head component to travel to dislocate from the articular lining of the SWM. Smaller heads have smaller jump distance, larger heads will definitely have larger jump distance. So if we are reducing the size of the femoral head component, we are actually impairing the stability and there are chances of impingement. Why? Because this part is going to hit this part quite early. Well, you see the distance from this part to this part is larger compared to the distance from this part to this part. So it is going to impinge here while this is not going to impinge that early. And there is definitely negative impact on proprioception because now you are supporting the body weight on a very small femoral head compared to the normal femoral head which is very large. So definitely the proprioception is going to be affected and the fear of smaller component is large because of the smaller contact patch area we have already discussed. However, the risk becomes negligible when the process design of the femoral head is more than 32 mm. Now currently the 28 and 32 mm heads don't have any significant difference in the wear rates so they both can be used. And mini stems and resurfacing could lead to better proprioception. Minimum amount of hardware will result in better proprioception. Therefore, the smaller stems and resurfacing have better proprioception compared to the have better proprioception because they enable natural femoral shaft deformation by providing the forces directly to the bone. That means minimum amount of stretch shielding and they are helpful in patients who are actually who are practicing impact sports and longer stems are actually at risk of stress shielding because the force is actually transmitted through the stem is actually distributed to the terminal part of the stem and this whole proximal femur gets deloaded of the force and automatically the remodeling does not occur in the proximal part is known as stress shielding. These are not recommended for young patients. Can be helpful in old patients in which the proximal hold is minimal, in which the proximal part of the bone is poor quality. So the take home message of the three presentations of the biomechanics component is that total hip replacement is not merely about replacement, it is about the restoration of the biomechanics because then only you will be able to restore the function of hip joint. And you have to take care in as preparation preparation by creating correct antiversion inclination and femoral offset and special attention should be given to pelvic tilt in lateral radiographs in supine and standing position in cases where major pelvic or spinal deformities are suspected. CT based planning can be helpful in grossly deformed establum and head size should be selected carefully with higher preference given to larger di diameter because then only your contact patch area will be higher that will result in better stress distribution and preoperative templating is helpful in a better planning of the surgery and to avoid intraoperative complications. Thank you.